Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 30th, 2020 edition of the Sandra Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Earlier this week, I talked about how big news events are often picked up by malware to trick users into clicking and opening malware attachments. Well, we have sort of two interesting examples uh, that uh, show this effect, but actually in very different ways. The first one is from the US, a recent TrickBot sample. And what it apparently does is that it attaches excerpts from news articles about the Trump impeachment to the actual file. Now, uh, this text is not meant to be read by the user. It's part of a binary file or uh, EXIF uh, tags that are being added to the file. But apparently it's meant to trick anti-malware into letting this malware in. Now, it's not really clear if this technique works here. There has been some work recently where sort of some artificial intelligence engines could be fooled into allowing malware pass by just attaching benign code uh, to the binary. Uh, I don't think uh, that same principle would sort of apply to text, but uh, you never know. And maybe the malware writers here know something that uh, I don't know. I've certainly seen similar techniques, for example, used to fool anti-spam filters and such, but that's when you usually expect text. So not necessarily sure if uh, this additional text in binary files would really make a difference. Now, unlike in the US, where impeachment, of course, at the top of the news still in Asia, it's the coronavirus, and Japan has seen some Emotet emails that do use the coronavirus to trick users into opening attachments. What they're doing here is the email sort of looks uh, like an official announcement. It's uh, coming from some disability healthcare plan provider, at least that's what it claims uh, to come from. And then of course it has an attachment with a further advice on how to protect yourself uh, from this virus. So something uh, very typical that you may expect like an insurance or a healthcare provider or so to send uh, to their customers. And of course the attachment then includes your standard Emotet malware. The emails look rather legitimate. Uh, some of them even have like a footer with a mailing address and such uh, of the organization that claims uh, to send uh, this email. IBM's X-Force has a quick write-up of an attack that they observed with a couple of samples and also some indicators of compromise. Apparently there are various versions of this email going around. Also Emotet does tend, once it infects a system, to inject itself into email threads uh, that it finds uh, in the particular victim's inbox. So that also adds some um, variability to the exact text of the message. And abuse.ch, uh, the person that also runs uh, some service like the Suze Tracker and other sort of malware lists, is starting to offering a new service, I got fished. Essentially what they're doing here is that uh, when a researcher comes across a data dump from a phishing campaign, they can send the data to abuse.ch and then domain owners can ask for reports whenever an email address within their domain is showing up in any of these lists. Sounds like an interesting project and probably worthwhile registering for it. In order to sort of validate that you're eligible for this service, you have to be able to receive email at the RFC 2142 compliant email address, which would be security at your domain. But the announcement also states that they will consider alternative delivery email addresses if you ask them nicely. Right now they got about 3,400 compromised email addresses in their database from 2,700 unique domains. So not a lot right now, but then again, they're just starting, they just announced this today. 
And Fortinet released an important update for its 40 seam uh, product. In this case, they fixed, uh, well, yet another one of those default SH uh, keys. Uh, now, in this case, it's actually not as severe as these default SH keys usually are. Yes, they essentially used the same SH credential on all of their devices, but these credentials only give you access to the tunnel user, which is restricted. You can only log into a very limited shell from which you could set up uh, tunnels. Uh, but then again, this could lead to a denial of service at the worst, according to Fortinet. And Qualys found a rather trivial to exploit remote code execution vulnerability in OpenBSD's mail server OpenSMTP. The vulnerability is exploited by sending a crafted mail from command as part of the SMTP envelope. All you have to do is essentially a less than semicolon and then the command you would like to execute. As part of the advisory, given that the exploitation is so simple, Qualys also published this simple proof of concept uh, exploit. So certainly something to pay attention to. And if you're running OpenBSD, you must patch this now. To make things worse, any commands that you execute this way are executed as root. Well, that's it for today. And sorry, yesterday, the YouTube version of the post podcast didn't post for some reason. Still have to debug uh, what's uh, going on there. But uh, well, let's hope it works today. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.